my name is Andy Zhang, and I'm the treasurer for AAA. Um, today, as you know, is the day for Valentine's, so we have quite a treat for you guys. Uh, we brought in one of the top pickup artists in the world, the so-called greatest Asian pickup artist. <laughs> He's not only a pickup artist, but entrepreneur and a great guy. <laughs> to leave with you guys today is that being a pickup artist isn't just about picking up a girl for the night or, you know, it's nothing sleazy like this. This is actually social interaction. So learning how to talk to people, how to get to know people. Um, and so this is not something that we want you to just think, oh, okay, tonight I'm going to get a girl for tomorrow. No, this is um, just so that, you know, we can kind of have an idea of the whole new evolution of what a pickup artist has become. And um, JT has trained CEOs, millionaires, doctors, celebrities. He's just you know covered a wide spectrum of people who just want to know how to interact with people. So without further ado, this is JT, and he's gonna do his thing. <laughs> Thanks to the Asian American Association for, for inviting me out here. Um, I am JT, the Asian Playboy. And it's uh, my company is the <laughs> So, without further ado, here are my career day at Harvard. So, what I'm about to going to talk about is who am I? Like, how did I get into this? Um, what is, for lack of a better term, the Asian American men's revolution or movement? And the issues and dilemmas that face Asian American men, and then taking the mystery out of pickup. How pickup, you know, how you can learn pickup in a very practical manner without like too much techniques. And so this is my job. <laughs> Alright. This is what I do for a living. <laughs> and these are my guys. And yes, yes, I do have a white guy on my team. Um I think you guys may remember Johnny Wolf, I, I believe he spoke here last year. And then there's Kevin Fang from VH1, the big bars. So, that's my job. How I got into this. Uh, before I started doing this, I was literally a rocket scientist, aerospace engineer. I worked on NASA and Air Force projects. I literally, I worked in mission control centers. And, you know, I had a 9 to 5 aerospace engineering job. Alright. And, however, I was very clueless when it came to women. Who here feels like they're kind of clueless? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the first time I ever got a girlfriend or ever kissed a girl was when I was 20. Uh, 20 years old. I had no idea that she even liked me. Uh, it was like college, college, and a bunch of us, you know, were watching a movie in my dorm. Okay, watching, you know, it's like 8, 10, 10 o'clock rolls around, my friend starts to leave, she stays. I'm like, okay, she wants to see the end of the movie, right? <coughs> 12 o'clock rolls around, and she's like the only one there. I'm like, okay, you know, what's going on? And it's only like 2 o'clock, I'm like, oh my god, she likes you. And that's how I got my first girlfriend. I was utterly clueless, right? And, um, so what happened is when I, uh, when I moved out to California, I tried all the standard social interaction, dating, and hanging out, and all that kind of stuff that you're supposed to do. I did speed dating. Who here has done speed dating? Uh, did speed dating, no luck whatsoever. Uh, <coughs> tried to do internet dating. And anybody done eHarmony? No one does that. <laughs> I got rejected from eHarmony. <laughs> <laughs> I was too analytical and too cerebral. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, so I tried that, I tried to do intramural sports, play volleyball, go to the beach, try to uh, do mixers, you know, work mixers. Uh, unfortunately, when you're in aerospace engineering or any kind of like very technical job, my social circle were either old men or like, you know, single mothers and divorcees with like the, the head of kids or grandkids. So my social circle in the workforce was non-existent. All right. Who here is an engineer? Right. Not too many, not too many. Uh, like doctor, lawyer. 
Okay. All right. Um, and what I learned going out into the workforce, guys, in college is the easiest time you will ever get girls. It really is. To get a girlfriend or however many women you want, college is the time. I wish I knew about pickup. All right. In college. So, um, how I got into this was I started a blog, a Playboy blog, and just talk about my adventures and my misadventures. I had no intention of making this a profession. I was just, alright, this is what I do, I'm gonna have some fun with it. Until one day, a mother called me up. A Chinese Canadian mother called me up. Her boy had been harassed by neo Nazis throughout high school, so he had no friends. Yeah, I never went on a single date. And she actually offered to fly me out there, all expenses paid, and to actually pay me. So I'm like, okay, that's cool. And that's what I did. For three days and three nights, I was the big brother he never had. And that's how I got into this. And that's, for me, um, yes, it's picking up women's fun. Yes, owning my own business is fun. And traveling is fun. But honestly, it's helping out my Asian brothers. Like dealing with racism and the presence that does exist. So in 2004, I started the pickup, um, took Mysteries Boot Camp when it was like $600. So I've been in the community for six years, professionally for five. <coughs> the current scene for Asian American dating is pretty, I guess, normal in some respects. There's your social circle, there's your work friend, there's your uh, school friends. Um, for a lot of Asian guys, sometimes they'll go overseas and get a wife there. I've had uh, students tell me that you know they were on the verge of just breaking down and, and having their parents set them up. And then there's, I guess there's something called a love boat. And it's, who's, who's done that before? Any of the Taiwanese? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, now the curious thing of what I've learned about the community is about 33% and sometimes 50% of the community are Asian, all right? Prejudice does exist in the community. Prejudice does exist in the dating scene. And some of the taxes just don't work for Asian guys. Uh, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that later, but basically, some of the game that works for like someone that's tall and good looking is just not gonna work for someone that's short. It's not, I mean, like one of the, the tactics is the very indirect, they'll go like, oh, by, you know, if I wasn't gay, I'd totally kiss you. All right? That's disqualifying yourself in the beginning. And as, as an Asian guy, one thing I've learned is the majority of girls I've hooked up with, the majority of them are like white, I'm already on some level disqualified simply because they've never ever dated an Asian guy. It's not that they're against it, it just hasn't happened to them. All right? 